Hi everyone, welcome back to this series of Amy Broco videos and tutorials. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this one is really, really awesome. In fact, we're taking Amy Broco to a new level. Definitely a new level as far as I'm concerned anyway. Usually the stuff that I cover is very basic because my own skills are very basic. But today we are delving into the engine room, if you will. <laughs> and, and what I mean by that is we're delving behind the normal Amy Broca formula language and going into, um, into, into the actual objects and methods and properties, which are quite common um, programming terms, but accessing those within Ami Broker itself. Now, the reason I want to show you this is to create what we're looking at right now, which is a comparison of equity curves. So if you've got four, in fact, this one is five trading systems, the very bottom one is a buy and hold. Um, <laughs> so as you can see, it hasn't performed amazingly over the last uh, 15, 16 years. And then the other four systems, um, we've got uh, the opening range breakout, the one that we showed you the other week, the Meb Faber um, long-term trading system, the monthly and daily one that we showed you the other week before that as well. Uh, we've got the Dow GAN, which I have at the site, and the Leap of Faith trading system um, as well. And you can make it look quite nice. Uh, it's the sort of thing that you would be seeing in a glossy brochure. In fact, um, I did see something similar to this just the other day at trendfollowing.com. You'll see it in a managed fund brochure as well, um, usually a comparison against your chosen index. So it's really, really cool, but it is a bit more complicated. I apologize in advance. What I'm going to do is just jump into a new sheet of paper. Um, and what we, what we would actually usually do is have our trading system already done up. In other words, we've got our trading system is already here. So pretend for the sake of this video, we'll just assume that we've already set up a trading system. Um, and that's exactly how I created those equity curves by, by putting this at the bottom of my trading system. Now, the first thing we need to do is get access to that object, to the back tester object, so that we can extract our equity curve from the back tester object. Now, what that looks like, actually, if we just do a really quick back test, and if we do a report on that back test and then show the equity curve, that's exactly what we're going to be extracting so that we can compare that against other equity curves as well. So to get access to that, uh, that back tester object, uh, we need to say set custom back test process or procedure. And what we're doing now is um, we're telling which trading system we want to actually look at. Uh, now, if it's the trading system that is within our code already, which is what we're doing here. We, um, it's not a file name that we're looking for, which as you can see, it prompts us for the file name. What we're actually just doing is um, using our existing code. So we just put two inverted commas and we close that off with a semicolon. Now we only want to access the back tester object if our current action, so in other words, the status of action is equal to action portfolio. So in other words, if we're running that back portfolio backtest, that's when we want to actually access our backtester object and get all of our all of the stuff out of that object, like the equity curve, um, and not before. So once we are doing that, then we can start extracting that information from the backtester object. So as usual, um, you've seen we will set up arrays in previous videos. And to do that, you can call it anything you like. For the sake of simplicity, um, what Amy Broker recommends um, in their help is actually just calling it BO or backtester object. Um, and again, that's just sort of to keep it simple. Um, so we're setting up an array here, and that array is going to hold our backtester object. So if we say get backtester object, there it is, fantastic. And open and close our bracket because it does turn blue. Ami Broker recognizes it, and that's a good sign. Um, but we're not looking to do anything with that yet. We simply want to turn that into the array of BO so that we can access that in the future, which is exactly what we're going to do. I should mention as well, with our if statement here, it's not the same as the if then else statements that we're that we're used to using within our Ami Broker formula language code. Um, so when we're using this if statement, we're actually opening a curly bracket and closing it off with a curly bracket as well. So that's all of our code is going to go within these two curly brackets. Now I mentioned objects, methods, and properties before. Now, as I understand it, what this is, this is the backtester object. And what we want to do now is actually access a method 
of that object. So there are a whole bunch of methods um, listed on the Amibroker site under the, the backtester object, you know, file section. So definitely check those out. But this, for the sake of what we're doing here, we simply want to run a normal backtest. And to do that, we type our BO, which is now the array, which contains our backtester object. And we put a dot to access the method and then we type the method that we want to access. So that's just our normal, normal backtest. Now, what that will do is that will run the backtest, and now we're getting closer and closer to being able to access the equity curve from within that backtest. In fact, what that equity curve will look like is actually bo.equity array. And you can see that it shows up nicely there as well. So we know how to get our equity array, but what do we do with it? How do we actually turn that into something that we can see on a chart? Now, this is where another video that we've looked at over the last couple of weeks comes into play. And I know this is a bit more advanced, but we have covered a lot of this stuff. And if you put it all together, then we can actually do amazing things. Now, what that thing is, is add to composite. So the add to composite function, which we did look at, actually helps us create our own ticker full of any data that we actually want. Now, we already know the data that we want, and that's this equity array. So if we're saying add to composite in order to create our own ticker, it turns blue and we open up our brackets and it tells us what we want. So the first thing is the array. Now the array that we're after is that equity array. The second thing we do, and it shows us as we go along, is the ticker that we want to create. Now the ticker that we want to create, usually we will start that with two squiggly things. Uh, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, if someone knows what they're called, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Uh, but we do this because that way it doesn't get actually it doesn't get confused with our existing tickers in our watch lists. For example, if you've got the S&P 500, if you've got the All Ordinaries, if you've got the FTSE 100, um, they all start with you know I or F or X or you know J, whatever it is. By starting with these squiggly things, um, it will actually separate it so that we can see it more readily whenever we want to. Um, and we can call this um, you know, our trading system. And we just put that in inverted commas, and that turns purple, so Amy Broker is happy with that, and we can move on. Now the next thing is the field. The field, we spoke about this in our Add to Composite um, video, we actually just call it the field of X, which holds all of the values, so open, high, low, close and volume, I believe, as well. Now, previously, when we've looked at add to composite and creating our own ticker, we've just used the ATC flag defaults, the default setting for that. Now, there's two different flags that we're going to use under these circumstances, and that's ATC flag delete values, so that we're deleting the previous values every time we do it, and we just use the pole symbol here, um, which is usually above your backslash or shift backslash on your keyboard. Um, now, that means that we're going to do this flag as well as. So, ATC flag enable in portfolio. And you can see that Emmy Broker shows us the way there. So, that's really great news. If we press space, close that off, uh, close off that bracket, and close that off with a semicolon then we have the code that we need to put at the end of our trading system um, to extract that into the ticker of our trading system. So what we do with that is if we're actually running a back test and if we actually have a trading system that we've been looking at previously, such as the, the gap up or leap of faith trading system, I've just put that at the, at the bottom of the code. And what I'd be doing then is actually running that back test and that would actually export that equity array to the ticker that we were talking about. So I'll just move this over so that you can see. But what we're looking for now is if we type in our search, those two squiggly things, and if we make sure that we're accessing all of the tickers that we can, as you can see, these are the tickers that, uh, that we've created previously. So from the, the buy and hold, there we go. These are that's the, the the data that we've got for that. Just a normal buy and hold. Um, we've got the the Dow GAN, which I, I trade myself personally. The Leap of Faith trading system as well. Um, the Meb Faber, you know, monthly and daily one that we were looking over the last couple of months, and of course the opening range breakout that we were looking at over the last couple of weeks as well.
You'll notice this equity ticker as well pops up um, and it's got three squiggly things. This equity ticker actually creates automatically every time we run a back test. So, you know, that's another way that you can, can get access to your equity array, um, but actually physically getting it from the back tester itself is uh, much better. I ran into a few problems using the equity ticker symbol myself. So once we've set up those tickers, we have to use one other thing that we have looked at in previous AmiBroker tutorials, and that is using the foreign function. So in other words, we want to create ourselves just a normal array, and these are the ones that I've done previously, but if we say the first, just like I've set up currently here, and what we look at is the foreign function. It turns blue, and what foreign is, is it's bringing in a foreign ticker into our code so that we can then access it, view it, and use it um, in our own trading systems within this code itself. So what we're looking for is that ticker that we just created. And that could be anything. Um, these are the tickers that I've previously created. So I'm looking at buy and hold um, and close that off. Make sure um, you, you call it exactly the way that you called it previously when you created it. Um, close it off with your inverted commas, and then usually we just access the closing price of that of that as well, and that's in inverted commas also. Close off the bracket and close it off with a semicolon, and that's how you, you bring in those tickers that we created in, into the code that we want to use it for. Now, the reason we use this foreign function and bring it into this code is so that we can plot it. <laughs> so then we can plot them all together. And there's just a few things that I want to show you with the plot function. Obviously, when you do plot them on the chart, it's really, really simple to do. Um, and again, I'll just quickly, quickly take you through it. But basically, if we type plot, it turns blue. It asks for the array. The array is just that array that we created, um, and that's accessing that foreign ticker that we also previously created. So we've been doing a lot of creating, <laughs> which is really cool. Um, and then whatever we want to call it, for example, buy and hold, no dramas, that's in inverted commas, it turns purple. So that means that it recognizes it. The color, we can call it any color. If we just type color, you'll see a whole bunch come up in our Emmy Broker help there as well, which is great. Uh, we could call it blue for now. It turns bold, that means the Broker recognizes it. And the style, we'll just call style line again for now. If we type style, again, it will come up with a few different styles for us. Now here's where we can get a little, little bit fancy. You'll notice that some of my, my plots are just straight lines or just, just normal lines, and others have a bit of gradient behind them. So if you do want to get a little bit fancy with that, it's very simple. We just use our pole symbol again because we want to do this as well as uh, the other style, and we want style gradient. That turns bold and it recognizes it and we can just close it off from there. So that's how you would actually access a gradient color and make it look a little bit more fancy. The other thing that we want to do is, you'll notice that our buy and hold all the way down here, you know, you can't actually see what's going on because it's so far down or so far removed from the trading systems uh, that we're comparing it to. So if we actually wanted to give it its own scale, uh, now where is it? This one here is our buy and hold and I've, I've just set this up previously, but again, we would add this by using the pole symbol so that it's doing it as well as, uh, and we want style own scale. That turns bold, and that means that Emmy Broker is happy with that. If we were to save that now, there we go. Uh, you can see that it's not so far removed, but it is still, oh, this is the, the blue gray one here, so that's great. There's a whole bunch of different ways to do it and, you know, really, you know, take on any form that you really want to make it look the way that you want to look, which is really great. I think this is absolutely fantastic. Guys, I hope this has helped. I know it's been a bit more complex, but I hope you've been able to follow along. I've loved bringing this lesson to you. Please stop by the website. It's asxmarketwatch.com. Really great culture there. A whole bunch of more free stuff, free videos, free trading systems and free lessons as well. Have a great week, guys. Happy trending until we meet again. And bye for now.